chair to start the show off, and then we got some, some political activities going on. So, here we go. Go ahead, hit it, guys. that stuff hey folks welcome back to the trailer park show we are doing our second Might in the love series. that stuff a little too much yeah, exactly we're doing a second in the series of, of, uh, of uh, programs where we are meeting with uh, the district uh, members or district candidates for uh, Austin City Council uh, we will be doing our formal introductions uh, just momentarily we have uh, James Slowpokey Ritter, who's the host of the show. We also have Delia Garza. Garza. We also have uh, Gavino Fernandez Jr., Edward uh, Reyes, and uh, yours truly, 
uh, Latino Limbo. Um, this time, we, our candidates actually come from the same district. Exactly. We have, we have two people that are running from, uh, for District 2 um, that, are, that we're going to be talking the to. The only two. The only two. That are um, running. And, and, and real quick, I, as we were talking about during the breaks and, and actually before we started the show, we are now officially international, folks. We are now being seen north of the border. And, and that being said, it's to my, to my Canadian friend, allow me to just say this. Oh, Canada. Please, okay, no. Right. no, no, no. <laughs> but uh, we wanted to go ahead and, and, and start the show with, with Gavino talking a little bit about the history of um, the Austin City Council district changes. Geographic district, exactly. I want to talk about it because I think it's very important. Uh, we knew that after the 2000, the latest one, the sixth time when it fell, that uh, no one really uh, picked up the baton. I know that the city council had formed a commission, and I think Gus Garcia was on the commission. Because I remember Marcelo Tafuel served on that board, another LULAC member. So for the record, I'm speaking as LULAC district director today, because we're nonpartisan. Just to have uh, your word so, tonight? Yes, sir. Yes, I'm doing <laughs> the LULAC thing today. <laughs> but, um, but anyway, as we, uh, as we saw how the council, through the Holly Power Plan and all that, uh, issues were affecting our immediate community and that we were kind of not not being heard we felt the, the current the, an urgency uh, to seek again the effort of forming uh, geographic districts in our communities and one of the things uh, for the record I also opposed it when it I think it came up uh, one of the six times I opposed it because Austin at that time was real small uh, since uh, the Watson era, we started a uh, city started annexing a lot of properties, so then it became more populous. The the city became more populated, and then you had pockets of uh, residents, like you know, the boundaries of Lakeway or whatnot, that were not being represented, uh, but they had been annexed. <coughs> so anyway, as um, El Concilio Mexican American uh, Neighborhood Associations, uh, East Town Lake Citizens Neighborhood Association, which is adjacent to the Holly Power Plant. Uh, we started organizing and uh, shows to uh, join LULAC, you know, to use LULAC's national prominence as a leverage to bring single member districts to Austin because LULAC had a history of doing that. Mm -hmm. And it was uh, former by, uh, President Rosa, Rosales and, and other folks. So we did that. We passed a resolution here locally and, uh, and then we went to the national and national pass an ordinance in Puerto Rico in 2008, as a matter of fact, and La Prensa printed that, and uh, it shows the, the beginning of where we are today. Uh, and uh, so from there, uh, we, as we started uh, uh, to, to make that, that effort, I'll read this because it's very important. Uh, Fernandez, director of the Concilio and Umbrella Group of, for East Austin Neighborhood Organizations, Fidel Acevedo, head of Mexican American Democrats, and Marcelo Tafoya, District Director of Blue Lake District 12 are the true responsible for the Hispanic community. First attempt at single member legislation, member district legislation, okay? Senate Bill 1618 was, was introduced by Senator Jeff Wenworth, died in community during the last legislative session. The decision to pursue single member district was made after a charter amendment committee failed to place single member, single member, district, ah, member, member districts on the Austin voters uh, that have been rejected in numerous times. Uh, the Gus Garcia Commission uh, recommended it, the council didn't act. Uh, the one that Mike Martinez put together also recommended the city council balked. So we decided, well, let's do it at the legislation. And at that time, again, a Republican in a Travis County Democratic uh, party is the one that began and initiated but eventually, where we are today. A Republican in the what? A senator. And because Wentworth, when, when when, uh, did I say Democrat? I'm sorry. Wentworth <laughs> has a, an area that he represents in Travis County. That's right. So we were able to leverage that. It went to the legislation the second time. And again, uh, Mike Martinez and Cole went and testified and said, no, you, you know, these aren't the folks that you need to listen to. Okay? So. It went to committee, and then we had a Paul Workman in the House sponsor it. But again, <laughs> you know, uh, it, you know, it just. And then that year, when uh, Wentworth mm -hmm. uh, and the American Statesman notified, it was a press a press release saying that uh, he was filing a bill. The mayor came out the following day, say it is going to be on the ballot. 
Okay. He didn't have no choice at that time, did he? Okay, and then, and that was to ease the legislature, to say, oh, don't worry, you know, they're going to do it, okay? And the biggest obstacle we got from many of our Democratic friends, liberals, is that we're not going to support your legislative bill because we're Austin and we don't like the state telling us what to do. So none of the legislative dele delegates, uh, we went to uh, the senior, uh, we had him here at the, as I said, guest, the senior Travis County delegation member. Uh, but anyway, he said, if any of this doesn't want it, it's not going to happen. Okay, fine. So, uh, but Rosemary Edwards, the Travis County Ch Republican Chair. She was Chair. The Republican Party Chair at the time. We went Travis and County visited Party every Chair. House member and every senator, and she right, was right there, right there, hand in hand with us. We met with Senator Watson. Yeah. And said, when is the right time, Senator? You know. <laughs> so. Uh, uh, he see that crowd, and he said, well. Yeah. It's now. <laughs> well, I can't support the legislation, but if it's on the ballot, I'll go out and, and I'll support it and whatnot. So, and, and, and then from there, uh, the petition drive came up as a, uh, what do you call it, a, a safety a, net. A safety Just net. in case the council they changed they their mind. They weren't going to want to do this. Right. So we started working on that at Austin Energy. And then we decided, I told Linda Curtis, Linda, this is Austin. Yeah. The media will never recognize LULAC and El Concilio of Mexican American Democrats as champions of this issue. We know that. So then we, we came together. Did you tell them why they wouldn't do that? Well, Why they wouldn't recognize well, it? Because Austin is Austin, you know. It's so a then we brought in. All, town and they didn't want this. And, and they, so then we brought out all the other players, you know, the other organizations, you know. And we said, <sighs> okay, fine. And we <sighs> formed Austin uh, Citizens for Geographic District. Representation. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that was the, the ballot. Now, I will give credit for that part to, for the 10 1 structure. Because I was called, we were constant, do you support 10 1 or 8 2 or whatnot? I said, look. For us, as the Concilio and LULAC, our victory was, it's going to happen. I really don't, not as I didn't care, but that's not our issue. So we work hand in hand, and, and that's why we're here. But I think it's important because you will never see the Austin media recognize, not me, but the individuals, the grassroots people the that, that, that initiated beginning. this, okay? And then to have one, and I'll quit it, that's good, I'm, I'm going. Uh, to, <laughs> and then to have Young Peck, a liberal consultant in Travis County, when this process starts, receive a call and says, we have a plan for you. You know, so we met and we heard and I heard him. I said, you know what, Peck? Get your package and get the hell out of here. <laughs> yeah, that's how how you dare that. you come tell us? That's why we want single member districts so we don't have political bosses. How, how, would you how would you think if I was, you know, go to Mesa Drive in Northwest yeah. Austin and I say, hey, I have a plan for you, buddy. Hey, this is how you're going to have it. Would you I like said, no, 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 no. I <laughs> said, that's why we're going to districts because we're going to be able to elect people from, from the neighborhoods. They're the, one, the voters will be able to speak more directly and make these candidates accountable. I'll stop at that and we can go to the <laughs> candidates. Uh, hold on. Before we do that, uh, we'll have to admit that uh, not... To get do the Democrats some credit, the, all the clubs <laughs> did support us. The only political entity that did not support this was the Travis County Democrat Party. All the Democrat clubs were on board. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, my people did a lot for it, but there was some help. Yeah. So I will give you all some credit. But the party itself was not for it. And like I say, that Peck guy, he wanted to fight this all the way. He, uh, a lot of people don't want this at all. Well, Peck was a supporter of Ted One. He didn't have no choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because he, that was breaking the machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was breaking the easy. machine of seven. And we had that most racist political form of government of the gentleman's agreement. Yeah. You go to the Mexican. If you're black, you go to the black person. Mm -hmm. And I always fought against that. I said, no, I'm going to you, Laura. <laughs> I'm going to you, uh, Spellman. You know? All right. <laughs> But anyway. <laughs> let's, let's meet our right guest right. tonight. <laughs> one of these people are going to be on city council. Correct. This is the, the uh, two members that are, that, are, that are running at this at this time. There's one person that's considering, but we think it's an, it's an unknown. We don't know exactly what's they're, happening. They're not going to. And gonna be August the 18th is a deadline. August the 18th is, is a deadline. So, so to file. So at this present time, this is this is the one district that is probably one of the most. I, I think it's one of the fairly significant areas. It um, is. I think so. And, and, I uh, live there. 
And it, and, it is, and, it, and it is one of those, it is one of the areas as we mentioned before where there's two people that are representing, two people that care about the district enough to go ahead and try to represent them. So that being said, what we want to do, folks, is we want to we go ahead and ask, uh, ask you guys to give a little bit of an introduction of yourselves, just tell us why you're running, and then <coughs> from there, we're going to go and talk about the issues. Okay. So, um, Ms. Garza, we, we, I, I flipped the coin um, earlier, sure. before I came to the, uh, came here, mm -hmm. um, and, and you were, and well, I wanted, to, I wanted to make sure I was nonpartisan <laughs> as possible on this whole thing, <laughs> you know, and, and, and because I like girls better than boys. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ms. Garza, well, I'm please. glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I'm Delia Garza, and I'm running for District 2, which is South Southeast Austin. Um, I come from a working class family. Both my parents were migrant farm workers growing up as children, and my parents were very involved in their community. I grew up in San Antonio, um, and they got my sisters and I involved. My father was a firefighter, 36 years in San Antonio Fire Department, and introduced me and my sisters to the political process that way. I moved to Austin the day after I graduated from college. I fell in love with Austin. I just knew it was a city that I wanted to make my home. And moved here the day after I graduated in May of 1999. I applied to the Austin Fire Department. Um, it was always an ongoing joke that I, that I was my dad's shadow. I wanted to do everything that my dad did. So following in his footsteps, I, I applied to the Austin Fire Department and got in. And um, was the most wonderful career that I had. Um, I was a firefighter for six years mostly in South Austin, immediately got involved in the union and got involved in city politics that way and saw um, the city not listening and not being fair and wanting to speak to the firefighters about f wages and safety conditions. So um, I was elected to the executive committee twice. I was the first female um, elected to the political action committee and um, was very involved. I've been involved in the Democratic Party. And uh, when I turned 31, I had this little itching dream that I'd always had to be an attorney. And so it was a really hard decision, but I left the department to go to law school. And I wanted to be a stronger advocate for my community, and that's why I did that. And so I'm an attorney now for the state. In the meantime, I've been involved in the community. I was on the Charter Revision Committee that Gavino just talked about. Um, that recommended the 10-1 district plan to the city council. You were on our side. I, I, we, we were on the 10, I was on the 10-1 side, and they rejected that recommendation, and uh, I, I firmly believe that it was rejected because they did not want change, and um, put 8-2-1 instead on the ballot, and so then Austinites for Ge Geographic Representation um, formed a, an organization, and we, it was the most amazing grassroots coalition I've ever been a part of, as you mentioned, it was, uh, Democrats, Republicans, all kinds of people, and people so ready for change. And it, it had failed six times. Geographic representation had failed six times, and we knew it was an uphill battle. But um, the more I got involved in the process and being on the committee, I learned so much about how so many areas in Austin have been neglected, and it just was very upsetting to me that um, all, so many people have been neglected. And so, the, my favorite thing to say when I was campaigning for 10-1 was that not a single city council member lives south of the river, which in my opinion was ridiculous that half the city's not represented. And so um, I'm excited about 10-1. Um, I've committed my, my career to public service and I feel this is an opportunity to continue to, uh, to serve my community. So um, that's why I'm doing this. Hey, man. Who's the nice? I'm Ed Reyes and uh, um, I'm from, from South Austin, born and raised there in Dove Springs. And um, we, we've just done a lot of community work to begin with. Just uh, did a lot through the church for about 16 years, helping uh, families, children, adults, you name it. And uh, in 2009, uh, um, I lost my mother to cancer. And we, me and my wife were caretakers. And um, after that experience, uh, going to the hospitals and seeing a lot of uh, family members by themselves, um, 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 patients by themselves, we were, we were impacted, you know, and, and that's kind of why that's my number one thing is to impact, because I believe that's the way that change is going to come. Um, we, we turned around and started getting heavily into, into, uh, involved into our community even more. Um, so we started stepping out, um, stepped up as a CDC commissioner, and we was voted into that. And uh, so started representing the community, the community's needs, you know, um, watching out for the zoning that was taking place. Uh, my, my entire family is from East Austin. And so we saw the gentrification that took place. 
and uh, we saw the reasoning behind it and we saw the businesses that came in and dominated uh, our communities and, and raised the taxes and so um, I, have a, I have a real deep passion for my community and and I don't want to see that happen you know in South Austin we already didn't get the attention we needed uh, not only with the floods but throughout the years throughout the years with with our streets sidewalks I mean I grew up there I knew what it's like to ha have to walk cross street without proper uh, signage or, 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 or things like that and had to had to basically fend for yourself as uh, as a resident as a taxpayer you know and uh, my mother my mother worked for the government for 40 years she worked, she worked for veteran affairs and we were raised around veterans and so the impact in my life was to give back. You know, I've, I've known, I know veterans today that have served their community for free longer than they've served in the service or served on a job somewhere. You know, for 20, 30 years, they've turned around and done 30, 40 years in service. So we stepped up also creating the Neighborhood Association. The Neighborhood Association was intentional and it was, it was for the sole purpose to make people accountable for their actions. Make a, make organizations accountable for their actions. There was a lot of money coming to our neighborhood, and I felt like it was being intercepted, and the community wasn't receiving it. Um, they weren't receiving the resources and things like that, and when resources and that came to our community, they were being held over our people's heads and over their families, and um, uh, our needs began to be sold. And so um, the flood, was the main reason that I stepped up. Um, a lot of people came to me and asked me to run, you know, that I should be running. Why haven't I considered it? And this and that. Uh, about 65 people. And uh, the last one, it was about a group of 14. And um, I basically told them, you know, I'm not gonna make no promises, but let me go talk to all the important people, all the important people in my life, you know, my wife, my kids, uh, my, my dad, you know. And so I talked to a, a lot of people, my pastor, you know, because I knew it was going to be a challenge. It was going to be a challenge because I don't have a political background. And I knew I was going to be up against more than just uh, running or representing needs. You know, I was going to be up against still this. We don't have the at-large system, but the at-large system, is, I feel like it's still in play. You know, everybody still wants to put uh, um, their, their hand in, in, uh, on the steering wheel. Um, so I took the challenge, and, and I stepped up. And um, we still do community work. So when District 2 formed, uh, and we, I feel like Del Springs just inherited Del Valley and, and, and west of 35. Uh, of communities we've already been working in, communities we've already been serving. I've been a business owner. I've, been a tree, I've had a tree service for the last 10 years. And uh, we've always discounted and done things for free for everybody in, our, in south of Ben White. And so, I don't know if I'm Let me write that down. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, I have some trees that are rushing my window. So basically what we did was um, <laughs> when the boundaries opened up for That's District right. 2, we ended up, I never realized how much resources Dove Springs actually had. Because then I started running into people in other communities um, that needed what we had, basically. And so we just started pouring out our resources uh, we, we get stopped in the middle of our tracks from campaigning to, to helping back to community work. And so I'm, uh, I'm trying to find the balance between, you know, the campaign. I'm still learning. I have a lot to learn. And so You're not uh, a politician. Not a politician. But, you know, at, at the same time, I'm, I'm, uh, I learn quick. I catch on. And, uh, and I'm serious and I'm committed. Okay. Uh, I know both of y'all mentioned about the supportability. I go back there because you said that. And I'm afraid it's Garrido's fault. What's that? Yeah, for years and years, I know you, you've always talked about this gentrification or what else you call it. Uh, no, no, uh, I call it genocide. But genocide. Everybody. Well, after we had know, that meeting with, uh, with, uh, with Dr. Paul Cruz, mm -hmm. I went and did some more of this research, and there is, that you might be on something. And he mentioned that, too, and now you're beginning to see it in Dove Springs. It's like someone wants to move out the lower-income people. We're almost all blue-collar down there. I mean, there's not... And it's, and it's like, is there, why are property values so high there for people who have been living out in Dust Springs all their life can no longer pay their taxes anymore because their, their place has got so high and who wants to pay that much for that place? Uh, that's, so, a, that's actually something that the, count, that the county will have to fix. 
The um, county? Yeah, no, a, well, the, does it, the city it, have any part to do the, with the, the, uh, well, well, yeah, the increases? They go yes. Under, I mean, under mm -hmm. they do. The increases, yes, but the way they appraise properties, that's a legislative issue that needs to be addressed uh, because Texas has a very different way of appraising properties. What, what can the city do things? for affordability of living here in Austin? Yeah. Cause it's got, and I just heard they're building, they're going to tear down a little putt-putt golf course here on Lamar and, and build a skyscraping condos and who's fitting all these places? So, so I guess here, here would be the good question. How do I phrase that to a question? Well, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and do this part. One of the, one of the big things that always right. goes on with, with, with Texas here is they always have the, the I believe with the county, um, with the homestead. Does that have anything to do with the city? Yeah. Well, that's more of a county. We, more of a county. The city doesn't provide it, so maybe provide, that's a good so, question so for both. That we'll, we want to do. do you support yes. the home? The so we started off with with, uh, with Ms. Garza, so we're going to start with you, Mr. Diaz. Would you support if it comes on to if it comes to you? Um, if it crosses if, your desk. If it well, crosses your desk, would you? No, would you let, let's put okay. it. Will you champion will you a champion? homestead okay. well, extension? Well, correct. Okay, that works. For would the you 65 champion, and over. Would you champion a, a homestead a homestead extension? Yes, I would. Yes, I would. I, I definitely think. Uh, whatever relief that uh, our communities can get, um, you know, is, uh, is necessary. A lot of times the decisions we've made um, throughout our city uh, has landed on the backs of our community, you know, and I believe it's time for the city to give back and to back up the communities where they need relief. Not where, not where the city thinks they need relief, but where the community actually needs the relief. Okay. Ms. Garza? There actually is already a homestead exemption for 65 and older mm -hmm. in the city. There's not a, a, a general homestead exemption for a, any homeowner. A okay. general homestead yeah, exemption yes. then. <laughs> so, and, and I would absolutely support that and would sponsor the ordinance. Awesome. So does that take care of my uh, yes, uh, affordability question? That, that's part, that's well, part no. of it. That affordability no, actually comes in a, in a lot of different ways. Yes. Well, I'm kind of over my hair when it comes to, you know, money. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, uh, I know it's, it's gotten to be so expensive to live here. And I've heard other people talk about the affordability. Uh, what can what can you do yeah, well, as a city councilman? Uh, how do I how do I word this? Uh, the big the big play right now is everybody's talking about affordability. Everybody's talking about how how expensive it is to live here. Yes. Um, I think there was a recent report out there saying that it was pretty harsh. Um, the the burials disappearing. And, and <laughs> where are they going to go? We've got we've got these apartments that are being built. We've got these other items that are being built. And and. We've got people in droves that are living in, in East Austin, Southeast Austin, that are l going away from Austin and moving into the county, mm -hmm. which is something that has been addressed um, at, the, at the city level, which nothing has been done, uh, as you guys can tell. Uh, property so taxes the question is, at, what are solutions what, what, that will be brought to your table under your... What are you, what are you looking at? What are you looking at as possible to, to try to ease? Make it affordable. To make it affordable. Um, I think 10 is a huge step in the right direction for that first. Um, I bought my home 11 years ago, and even then, I had to decide where to buy. Do I buy in Austin, or do I buy somewhere that I can get? It's my first home, and I still live in that home. Mm -hmm. And you have all these visions of what your first home is going to look like, and then you start looking at what you can afford, and you realize you're not going to get that you know, great little cute house that you want. And, and, this, and this was 11 years ago I had to make that decision, and it's just getting worse. Um, but I did buy my house. I, I bought it in the responding territory of the fire station that I worked at. I was at South First and uh, Ben White. So I still live in that home. And it is an issue that working class families are dri being driven out of Austin. Um, I have a, I, I, I'm an attorney, but I'm a state's attorney. I don't get paid as much as a lot of people <laughs> think that attorneys get paid on the state level. And one of my colleagues just left her home in South Austin to move to buy in Pflugerville because that's the only place that she could afford a home for her and her family. She should have gotten a maintenance. <laughs> That's messed up, yeah. um, so and so I think that the fact that there's going to be district representation is huge because, and I just, a, a, a brief example, I was on a, a tour with some candidates and, and current council members and we were touring an affordable housing place in uh, East Austin and I'm not going to name who it was, but it was the current council person and they said, what's the rent here? And we had just asked that question, but this council person wasn't in the room yet. And the, the guy said it was this tiny two bedroom for 1700 a month. And I thought, oh my God, that is so expensive. And there was a candidate um, from District 4, and she's like, oh my God, 1700 Well, then this current council member walked in and said, um, what's the rent here? And uh, they said 1700 And th this person said, wow, that's cheap. 
So I just feel <laughs> like it's a pers it's a perspective of of. It's you not know, the one that has a million dollar home in our area, is it? Apparently, <laughs> 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 it sounds like it. It was. <laughs> you won't mention it today, <laughs> huh? but hence. <laughs> so how do how do we feel? Okay. There's. You're, I you're, think you would, if, if you're um, elected. Give me something. Give me. Give me some meat on that whole thing. What. What would you. What would you recommend as, as a city it council is, member? What would you. What would you champion to try to lower property yeah. taxes to lower uh -huh. the expenses that we have that people in Austin have to pay? Well, homestead exemptions, I think, is the first and quickest way to do it. Um, there's city land can be transferred for affordable housing projects, and some of that's trying to be done right now. There's some council members that have been very open to that to transfer city land that's not really being used for anything to affordable housing units. I think there's ways that the city can partner with private corporations to affordable housing units are usually done by developers who they're looking for tax credits. That's what they so a portion of the the housing units in the in the complex will go to affordable housing at different poverty poverty, poverty levels, and then another portion goes to at market rate. So they they're able to get tax tax credits, and then they have to commit to 99 years or something like that of that. So that that's a way. Just get more partnerships. Um, and it's such a complex issue because it's a very supply and demand issue. The reason rates go up is because. Well, well let me add, let me add one more thing to it. Mm -hmm. City council's budget is close to what? A billion dollars. Yes, eight hundred eight hundred million for the general. Eight hundred million dollars for for a city that is just under or approximately a million people. Mm -hmm. Can't there be something cut? In all honesty, can't we trim the fat somewhere? Uh, let's not get too far ahead. We'll take out our daddy. We're going to answer the affordability. In the okay. meantime, look, the city budget, if I'm not mistaken, is $3 billion. Okay. So let's go, go ahead. So we'll, we'll, Why don't they just give all of us a couple thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> because Austin Energy itself is $1 billion. Right. Well, I, I just want to add, there, it, it's such a complex issue, and it, it's, it can't just be by uh, building more. It, there's also, I think there's opportunities to... to it, it, have companies that come here and if we give them incentives, they have to provide decent wage jobs for people because wages have stayed stagnant. While, while, I brought while, Samsung up many times. I love Samsung. <laughs> well, so <laughs> wages are staying stagnant while housing co costs are just going up and I think mm -hmm. it's necessary. There's all kinds of ways to, to help affordability and that's one of them. Provide jobs that provide living wages for people. That's another way um, you can, and it's part of the you know, incentive packages. When companies move, say they want these incentives, we say, well, We'll give you these incentives, but you need to provide good wage jobs to the people that um, you know, people that live here. Don't bring all your employees with you. Provide jobs. Well, neither one of y'all brought yard signs either. We usually put Chandler yard signs up with you. Okay. Like, well, anyway, go ahead. Let's 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 go ahead. let us Fourteen hundreds a lot, you know. To to somebody else, that's half of what they pay already. And so, you know, I pay fourteen hundred for a flood home just to rent it. Mm -hmm. And you know, you look at that. That's range down there at the flood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you think about our community. That's way too much for our community. You yeah. Know? That's a lot. And and um, not only are you paying a high cost in rent. And the, the the renters, the owners, the homeowners, and the developers who've come in and bought these duplexes and homes, and they turn around and rent them. Then you have these homes that aren't in great condition, so you have high electricity bills. You got electricity bills, 500, 600, on top of your rent. You know, so you're talking about something that's starting to become out of reach because everybody's affected by it. So you got developers who are going through the loop, who are just passing this price tag down to the renters. Yeah. You know. And so, you know, there, there's policies, there's things that are making things harder. So we all know it's a problem. To me, um, there are some things that have come across the table on uh, the CDC uh, commission, right? The, and uh, I can't mention none of the groups or the plans and things like that, but they're undeveloped. You know, they come and, and they, they have plans, but then our communities aren't involved in it. And then they say, well, they've done community work, Convenient. And there's 15 commissioners at the table, and I asked this last meeting, or the meeting before, I said, hey, how many commissioners got a phone call or an email from these individuals? And uh, only one of them did. And, you know, and, and that's a problem, you know, because, because their comments and their response to us was, we'll get you on the next time. You know, and the next time, that's like, 15, that, to me, that's staying 15, 20 years. It's too late. So I think there's a lot of areas you can improve. 
You know, I think as things come across your desk and you make right decisions when it comes to developers, when you come to code, when it comes to code, and when it comes to protecting the single family districts, you know, it, when it when it comes to protecting the community as itself, the community has to be priority. You know, that's how that's how you will bring the prices down. That's how you will make them reasonable. Because when you're you're functioning as a community member, you're functioning saying, hey, this isn't this is not okay for our community. Now I do have some great ideas too. You know, I don't I can't figure out why we've got so many people moving here. You know, to me, it, I mean, I know why, but why aren't they paying anything? To me, they should be paying something that. They're they renting one of these houses around here. They are well, paying. Them. Well, you know, they move from from California over here. The houses over here, they're a lot they're a lot more reasonable. You know, and they can buy two, three houses for what they're paying over there. You know, and to me. So you're talking about taking money away from them because they whatever money whatever money they they're bringing in as as a as a citizen or as a resident of Texas. The, as, that whatever money they take that they're bringing in from them as as a private as a citizen, I guess uh, uh, you're wanting more money that they're that you're you're wanting more of that money that they're bringing in from another state. So like if I well, move if I move from California, what, what you're implying right now is that if, I, if I'm moving from California right now because I had a big house that I paid half a million dollars for it and I'm gonna my, buy a house now that's gonna be two hundred thousand dollars, <laughs> that you're gonna want more money f out of that money that I just brought in with me. So you have so you have thing for that. Uh, if if you sell your house for five five hundred thousand, you gotta buy a house for five hundred thousand. Well, here's the reality yes, is that uh, what's uh, happened to, to us, where I, I live on Haskell right around the power plant, and uh, 10 years ago, my dad paid zero taxes. Today, I pay $4,500 on that same property in property taxes, okay? So uh, it, it's all this change in, in the zoning, all this, it, it's mm -hmm. a fact that, and uh, that, like, like you mentioned, the, 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 neighbor, the districts is gonna bring a totally different uh, priority and agenda because it's neighborhood. Yep. It's no longer going to be the Chamber of Commerce City Council. It's no longer going to be the Real Estate Council uh, City Council. It's more uh, the neighborhood uh, from a neighborhood uh, ground level where you, obviously it's going to be homeowners, landowners that want to protect as much as their property from these high increases in, in, in property taxes. So both of you guys, I'm going I'm to tie one last question on in regards to Yeah, I'm looking at the clock. Um, we, yeah, both of you guys mentioned something. we got to get to my pot proclamation. <laughs> both, both, both of you had mentioned something in re that was kind of interesting. Uh, affordability. You kind of talked about the houses. You know, when you're working with, with, the apart with the people that are building apartment complexes and, and you're working with the city, you're talking about Austin, Austin, uh, Austin Energy. Both groups are costing money to mm -hmm. the city. Okay? They're eating up money in some fashion. Yeah. What are we going to do to fix that? What are, are, we gonna, are you going to be going in as, as a representative um, for your district and be able to say, I want to see where we can cut, trim the fat. I want to be able to say, I want to look at, at, at everything line item and say, well, let's go ahead and cut, cut here and there. I think that has to be the mentality. Okay. You know, I don't think we can so much pinpoint something from here. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's a lot of candidates pinpointing a lot of different things. Oh, yeah. But the, the facts are that you can't pinpoint nothing until you get there. You won't know. You won't know even the... The, uh, there's so much, there's so much we don't have access to, you know, to even deal with. I mean, Austin Energy in itself, I think the, 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 the employees. Austin Energy wants to build a new building. Well, they let, want to build a new building. Let's, let me, lead, can I lead off with a question yeah. on the now we're talking about this. What's your, um, we bounce uh, around a bit around it. Well, well, what's your, uh, opinion on Austin Energy having its own management board versus the city council? Oh, that's pretty good. So I, I think the council is not over right now. The city yeah, the, the city the council energy. right now oversees Austin Energy. The proposal that was talked about and didn't pass was uh, creating a commission like they have in San Antonio mm -hmm. that oversees the, uh, the electric company, taking it away from the city council. Because the argument is that city council members are so much involved in too many things and they don't have the expertise to manage an electric uh, So they want to put non-elected officials over the energy department, oh, just yes. basically. So if that proposal were to come to you, uh, obviously you would look at it and, and see the benefits, but what what would be your thinking? What's your thinking on that? Because it is, it is going to come back again. I mean, I, I think that we're going to look to the experts no matter what, mm -hmm. you know, on the city council. And it's going to be up to us to... to uh, to receive whatever the experts, you know, what, whatever they bring to the table as far as 
uh, the solutions and things like that. Just like it is going to be for us to look to the community and whatever solutions they bring and then make decisions off that, you know. I don't think it's something that I'm gung-ho for, you know, either or. Okay. You know, I think, um, um, I think like this, I think if there's enough people in our community who say that's what we need to be standing for, then that's what we're going to stand for. Okay. Um, I don't think it should be taken out of the purview of the city council. I think it's a, it's a big revenue builder for the city, and I think that it needs to be overseen by I, I think it's great to have like a task force that recommends stuff to the city council, but um, it's such a, it, it, it brings a lot of revenue to the city, mm -hmm. and so, but through transfers. And so I think it's important that it stays under the purview of the city council. Excellent. So let's go ahead and bring your question up because I know you. No, no I'm, I'm just stuck on this here a minute. Now, I kind of like the idea of s somebody elected looking over this, but they're only doing it because they want to get money out of it. Well, we're running out of time, so we have to. I, I think I heard someone say this the other day. I thought it was so true that your council members are like it's like your board of directors that are over a huge, huge budget. Yeah. And so if that board of director is not How doing much a good, we say three billion dollars. Yes, yeah, anyway. three three point three billion dollars. So if you you need to make sure that you have people on that board of directors that understands the complex issues of the city and understand that there are areas to trim fat, like the Austin Energy proposal to go buy spend millions on a building when there's buildings already available for them to. Um, you know, it's change the buildings well, you got. Or, or that. I mean, there's 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 expenses there. There, I, th I think right now the at-large system has created a system where the council doesn't have time to focus on certain things, and they depend too much on staff recommendations. And and because of that, you know, they, they don't have, they don't have time to do their homework. I think this district is going to create an opportunity for. Council people. We haven't got into transportation so, yet. So, <laughs> in your opinion, you be, you you feel that the current management of Austin Energy structure is the appropriate one to with stay with. Yes. So how will you deal with the fact that Senator Watson will be drawing legislation to help bring that to a reality? The, the, um, that the city oh. won't be no, over? Senator Watson is looking at doing legislation that will allow and help the creation of the commission oversight instead of the city council. I don't agree with that. Sounds okay. like he wants his hand in it. Okay. Uh, Let's talk about Dove Springs because Dove Springs is yeah, very let's, unique. Let's, Dove Springs very unique. It's, it's a neighborhood. It, all right. Short of. Uh, We're uh, not going to get around to my marijuana proclamation as always. <laughs> I, hey, I give you the opening. But, I know, okay. but you're right. We got, we got uh, uh, less than 15 minutes coming up. Because uh, those of us that know the history of Dove Springs, Dove Springs was built for, uh, uh, the, for Air the Bertram Air Force mm -hmm. military retirees way back when. That's why you have good streets, good sidewalks, and all that. Well, actually, but, we just had to put some of those sidewalks well, in. But. Okay, but, uh, you know, capitalism works the way it does, and it, it, it eventually ended up in the hands of, of people that have less financial resources than the one that it was created for. Therefore, it provided a lot of challenges. Uh, How can you see that what, challenges? What, uh, what needs do you see that are coming from that specific community that you will champion to, to improve quality to of improve life? the quality of life in Dove Springs? I, I think What's the most common thing people tell you? Um, I think there's affordability issues. I think there's a um, very lack of mass transportation. The P Project Connect has ignored South Austin, if you look at Project Connect's vision. Um, that's a big deal for me, is has having good transportation options for people um, and to lessen traffic congestion, uh, help just very basic stuff, health, health and wellness. Um, there's, there's families in Del Valley that live in food deserts uh, that have to travel to Bastrop to get to their closest grocery store. Um, that wouldn't happen in West Austin. Um, there needs to be, like, I just think 10-1 is so historic and huge because there's going to be that voice and you'll be able to concentrate on, on these families who were being forced out of, out of the, the neighborhoods that they grew up in. Um, so I think it's health and wellness issues, affordability, transportation are the biggest issues. And I mean, right now the biggest thing is the buyouts and how is that going to affect families and how if the city buys these people out, where are they going to move? Are they going to be able to afford to stay in Austin? And is there, are there options in place for them? So I think the city needs to create some kind of um, staff to help those families find affordable housing to be able to stay in the community that they want, that they grew up in. So those are the, the big issues that I have. What are the most common things that, that are brought to you 
from 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 your water where you grew up and everything in regards to issues that you know that they most commonly bring to you so um first and foremost i love my neighborhood <laughs> i love south austin i love the people over there um you know the process is broken basically it don't matter what our need is when we go to get, reach out for it for to for a process that process is broken they tell us to go through this route and that route through the city, call these people and those people. Those processes are broken. We get nowhere. You know, we have people who have called to try to control speeding. They open up a street, you know, they open up a dead end. Next thing you know, they're speeding constantly. You know, within the first two weeks, it killed like six of the community's pets. You know, and on the phone, the city, all they can do is look is look at a map, you know, to try to make themselves familiar with our community. And that's not okay. The, the process need, you know, you, you got to have these hands on. You got to come to South Austin. You know, and that's what, that's what we're going to do. We're going we're gonna to bring it to South Austin. We're going to bring the resource to South Austin. Yes, there's transportation issues um, everywhere. I mean, that's from William Cannon, you know, Stasny, Del Valley, you know, you name it. Um, yes, affordability. Um, you know, home, you have people in the flood areas who, who are retired, you know, who, who live off of a fixed income. And, and uh, they've been, they've, they've lost all their, their income and they've lost all their, their uh, savings. Um, you know, you have, you have some people who are just starting out and lost everything. And so you have people who moved from our community to Dell Valley. They moved from Dove Springs to Dell Valley and fell into the same mess because it's, you know, you got houses that are being sold and rented and things that are happening that, that aren't up to par. So the next thing you know, they're moving into a new house that has all kind of hell damage and leaks and all that. And it's just one problem after another. This process is broken. You know, uh, I think access, I think we lack access. You know, um, so uh, you want to give them all access? Yeah, well, I want to bring them to the table of decisions. That's what I want to do. I want to be able to bring the community to the table where the decisions are being made. And my you know, complaint is you got to walk too far to get on the bus. Yeah. I mean, somebody like me really doesn't have to, and, and I, I know that's uh, not just in Del Valley, but all over the city. I guess that's, we won't get time to talk Capital Metro, but... Uh, and I, I even, like and even health, same thing. You know, it's the same issue. You know, I, I mean, we, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the health and wellness. You got to over there, yeah. but you got to watch well, it. I remember back in 1990 when Commissioner De Leon was in office. Yes, sir. I uh, served as, uh, as chief of staff. When we walked in, Hank Gonzalez had worked on the swimming pool. That was the first thing that uh, was seen at in Dove Springs as progress. Uh, I don't know if you were the, lived there in that uh, area. but I remember that. But then from the swimming pool, it grew to the park, and then we, uh, uh, Victor Aquino. I don't know if you remember no Victor Aquino. No bus goes to that pool either, uh, by the way. Cristina Chavez, uh, Council Member Larson, I think, mm -hmm. still lives there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then there was Scan. That mm -hmm. was the name of the in Franklin Park. Uh, in Franklin in Park. Community. So. Uh, that that community has grown a lot from way back, from way way back when, and uh, uh oh, here comes the chief of staff. Well, uh oh, something uh oh. One good question. Okay. Okay. We love Dove Springs too. Right. It's really nice. I work in the heart of Dove Springs. There, so I won't say where, but at a grocery store. Okay. <laughs> but one thing is, being be approachable. A lot of the peer community doesn't like the city, city council now because they can't go there and talk to them. Would you be willing to go <coughs> on a monthly, semi-monthly, once a quarter, whatever, town hall meeting type to have like a town hall meeting in areas of the city to get to, to, to hear the concerns of the community? In the district. Yeah, you know, like having a little town hall meeting or whatever, you know, there's the Dove Springs Recreation Center, there's several churches around and all that other stuff. Because accessibility to the people there, you know, is one thing. Because, you know, we hire, we, we vote our representatives in, but they don't listen to us at all. So a lot of the concerns are being able to talk to you and get their concerns and hear your things, your, how to solve some of the situations in the community. And with that, I shall go. <laughs> That's my question. Go ahead. Sure. Um, 
Absolutely. I think that is another thing that's going to be great about 10-1 is that although you still represent the entire city, you can concentrate on your district and you can have those quarterly meetings. You can actually or go home every night to your district. Exactly. Uh, I mean, <laughs> I, I live and work in my dis in district two right now. So yeah, yes, like I five, think six minutes. I think that's key to, to having quarterly meetings in, in different neighborhood associations throughout the district. Yes. I definitely think creating, helping to the communities that don't have it, having neighborhood associations, helping them create neighborhood associations, helping them create civic groups, create a type of database that's available through the community, you know, so that we can address needs and prioritize them also. So I, I would, I'm definitely committed to, to serving the community, however, however it is we have. Will you help me get the 311 bus to go down by the swimming pool? <laughs> All right. The date for this election, which is very important, uh, October the 6th yeah, is the deadline. Seven minutes or so. October the 6th is the deadline to register if you're not a current registered voter. Uh, early vote begins October the 20th and runs through October the 31st, with election date being on November the 4th. So if you're not registered to vote, uh, you need to register by October the 6th in order to participate in this election. I'm, I'm doing my Cesar Chavez card and, and I, actually, all I can right. actually help people register voting. So okay. just remember, I can help out and, and I want my holiday when I die. Okay, so well, good. <laughs> <laughs> so so with that, if the closing remarks is... Uh, well, we to got the, eight minutes. Oh, I mean, we're Seven minutes. You said less. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Do we have time for one more question then? Yeah. What? Uh, transportation, what do you guys think? What, what do you... Well, what, 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 we well, I never got my marijuana proclamation. You okay, gonna vote for it? Okay, then do let's, it, let's do go it, ahead. Let's, do I, it. I apologize. Let's do go it. ahead and do, do the, the marijuana right, proclamation. We gotta give them all two minutes apart. So, it's so go ahead. So go ahead and ask the question about the marijuana. We'll, all right, we'll give them three minutes each, comes across. and that leaves you two minutes. Ah, uh, yeah. Do your do your two minute speech. Well, no, 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 no. You, you. Marijuana proclamation. Hit your desk. Yes or no? Support it or not? I would support it for medical reasons. Yes. Excellent, Mr. Ritz. I, w I would say to give it to the voters to choose. The voters of Austin. That's what I would say. Damn, we get it for sure then. All right. <laughs> I'm going to Paul Workman. I don't want to go to California. I don't think that that's That would be the way. most voted on <laughs> referendum in the street. You probably had the well, biggest yeah, turnout. But, yeah, but all the people but that are, are know, one of the users will probably be you know, the, 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 <laughs> the most highest turnout in our communities uh, in Dove Springs, East Austin, because we always have a vote, high voter apathy, is when the lottery was on the ballot. Is that right? They all oh, wanted yes. the lottery? Everybody wanted in our areas was, was that. We didn't get the water, <laughs> wastewater, or, or well, a street if, bridge. If, or things, come, if things happen, if, if, we, uh, if, if we're able to have you guys on, it, we'd be more than honored to have you guys uh, come on again. Let's talk more about minutes. Uh, so, no, well, we're, let's give them so three minutes to go, go ahead. And, and, let's go ahead and do uh, the three minute um, exits and, and uh, talk a little bit more about yourself. Give us, give us the selling points as to why, why people should vote for you. Uh, we started with you first and we're going to go ahead and finish up and, with Mr. And mention if you have any upcoming event, you can't mention prizes or anything, but date and the event. Yeah, mention uh, anything things you like that. got Websites, going on. Websites are where they we'll can be showing you information, your information on the screen too. And convince percent. them why they should vote for you. Okay, first you can go to the website voteedreyes.org for District 2. Uh, I'm, a I'm a community member um, resident, born and raised, native, but I'm committed. That's why, that's why I ask for your vote. I'm committed to serving the community, to listening to the community, to hearing the community, up, representing the community, and um, she, she I'm far from ashamed here. of our community. So I'm proud to represent Dove Springs. I'm proud to represent South Austin. I'm proud to be from there and, um, and taking this challenge, you know, taking the challenge that so many of us will take in the future because 10-1 is, this has just begun. This is just the beginning, and, and I know that this is, we're going to have somebody from our community running at every single election. Thank you. Mom, well, put the stuff up. Okay. You did. <laughs> okay, Ms. Garza, go ahead. And, and, did you and see it? Yes. I did, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah you, were uh, you were talking about the pot. So. Okay. Oh, no wonder. <laughs> that damn pot. <laughs> yes, ma'am. First, I want to thank y'all. Thank you for inviting us to be on the show. Um, and I want to represent District 2 because it, it is the exact community that I grew up in San Antonio, working class, working class families. I, um, I, I see my neighbor, uh, neighbors getting up early and going to work every day and working hard to pay the bills and they're struggling and they haven't had that voice to, um, to advocate for them. And I think that my experience as, an, as a firefighter who has um, been involved in, 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 in organizing and I think my experience on the Charter Revision Committee and with, uh, with Austinites for Geographic Representation has given me immense ability to navigate city politics and that's going to be very very big that on day one the new council member knows 
to navigate city politics, to not depend on staff recommendations, to be able to, to see if something passes a sniff test when it crosses your desk, to understand complex issues. Sniff test? We're talking about marijuana, not, <laughs> not sniffing it. So. Uh, never mind. Go ahead. I'm still stuck on the. Oh, never mind. man. So um, I, I want to be that strong voice uh, for District 2. It's a very, it's a very diverse district, um, and the, there's, there's, there's very many, many needs, but I think a lot, I think the, the city as a whole, we have a lot more in common than we have in different. different. So um, I look forward to the opportunity. How many boxes are in, on your districts? Precincts? And, yeah, precincts. There's about 16. 16? Mm -hmm. in, in, in that, because I know that in District 3, we have 18. That, uh, well, I know it's a long walk to the bus, and the bus don't go by the swimming pool. I see the kids walking a long way to get to the Donald swimming pool. Yes. And uh, anyway, you got three minutes to know it. No events come, coming up, or uh, I have a meet and greet on Thursday. Um, it's what, at one of my supporters' homes. Um, my, I'm most active on my Facebook page. That's where all my events. She are did posted. put that stuff up on the screen. You, you can find her at Delia Garza for Austin City Council District Two. Yes. Um, website is also deliagarza.com. So uh, what about you? Any, any plans, uh, meet and greets that you're going to be doing pretty soon? Any uh, upcoming I'll events, fundraisers? Or? Our, we are, we're working on our, our next fundraiser, um, but um, our meet and greets are, are um, uh, we, hand them, we hand that information out one-on-one. -on -one, so we're just trying to be real discreet and just uh, take care of business that way. Well, you don't want people going over there to hear what you have to say? Yeah. That's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of, that's kind of, okay, I'm going to be perfectly honest. So go to the Facebook, go to the, go to the, go to the website, call my phone number. That's kind of like going the, the underground, or weather underground type thing, where, where it's like, it's probably, you know, because I, 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 I like going to the event. I like going to the event. Yeah. That's just me. So, um, your Facebook page is also Edward Reyes, Edward Reyes for Austin City Council. Good luck to your mom. And she's already shutting down for the system. So, uh, also, uh, his, um, Mr. Reyes' website is voteedreyes.org. Um, so, a uh, couple of great spots. I've been, I've been uh, perusing the, the both areas uh, while we've been talking. So, you, if you see me digging my head into the computer, uh, that was why. And now we can try to get some more information and, and have all that fun conversation. Uh, we do want to say uh, thank you to one of our... Um, we got two minutes. Uh, one of our, one of our uh, viewers. Uh, we already did our, our Canada. Thank you. And, and uh, we want to thank... Uh, a mutual friend, uh, which, which is the, the customer. Um, Let me just leave it, yeah. Yeah, he, he, wa he wanted to say uh, to uh, to Miss uh, Miss Pokey, uh, go Niners, and and uh, <laughs> go Niners. <laughs> and and uh, he wanted to thank both of you for, for taking the opportunity to uh, to come in and, and uh, sit down with us and, and talk. Well, about having what's going having on. worked for a former elected official and been in that capacity, I want to commend both of y'all for taking the challenge because well, be you get close being. <laughs> Uh, being, being a public servant takes time away from your family, takes time away from you. But you know, you're no longer a private person anymore. That's right. And, uh, you know, so that's, that's uh, a stand-up uh, challenge that, you know, very few people do take. Uh, so do want to commend you on that. Uh, do want to uh, wish both of you luck in, in this campaign. My kids are and, excited. And <laughs> one of the things that this is going to do is increase the voter turnout in our communities. Oh, yeah. Because the, the number of candidates that are in other races, but it also in this one, uh, will also be uh, contributing to the... Because, if, for example, in District 3, you have 10 candidates. Well, each candidate has their own little base, mm. you know. So that's going to bring in a, a lot of folks, and it's going to uh, meet that test that we argued for why we should have single-member districts is because it would increase the voter turnout. 10-4. Well, with uh, 20 seconds left, we'll just have to say goodnight. I do appreciate y'all coming in. I wish we could have talked about a whole bunch more subjects. But we'll, but we'll try to see about having you guys on so we can continue the conversation. Yeah, because it's still early. It's still early. Exactly. Uh, yes. Well, we're going to be kind of, there's uh, not many Mondays left before the election. Exactly. We, will, well, we six, want to thank you guys uh, very much for being here. And we will see you guys uh, next, uh, next week. Next week. Got another exciting tap. Oh, well. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Click. Okay.